Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll be analyzing Realty Income Corp, ticker symbol O. This company is super well known in the dividend investing community, so in this video I'll be discussing their key business, dividend safety, and their status as a dividend aristocrat. Make sure you stay until the end of the video because I'll be rating Realty Income Corp on a scale of 1 to 10 and give my thoughts on if this company is worth the hype. For those who follow my channel, you may know that my best performing video by far is an analysis on Simon Property Group, the largest small REIT in the United States. In that video, I provide a little more context into REITs than I do in this video. So, if there's something I say in this video that doesn't make sense, hopefully that video will be able to help. Also, the last video I released got 16 likes in the first two days. So if we could beat that number on this video, it tells me that you like this content and to make more videos like this. Now with that said, let's jump into the analysis on Realty Income Corp. But first a disclaimer, please do your own research. I'm not a registered investment advisor. All investment or financial opinions expressed in this video are from my personal research and experience and are intended as educational material. Realty Income Corp is part of a prestigious group of stocks known as the Dividend Aristocrats. Every company that falls into this group not only consistently pays a dividend to its shareholders, but has increased its dividend consistently for the last 25 years. Now of the 500 companies that make up the S&P 500, only 63 of them can be called dividend aristocrats, and only three of those are REITs, or real estate investment trusts. As dividend investors, a good history of consistently growing your dividend payment is a key factor in choosing whether to invest in a company or not. For example, the list on screen, which you can find by googling S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats, has four companies that hold a place in my investing pie. However, what makes Realty Income Corp a little more special than the other companies on this list is that they pay their dividend monthly, so it's a little bit more consistent stream of cash flow than those who pay dividends quarterly. So, how does Realty Income Corp generate the cash to pay out these dividends? Well, Realty Income Corp is a REIT which stands for Real Estate Investment Trusts. All REITs own some property that they use to generate cash flow or they invest in financial instruments like mortgages that are derived from those properties. In the case of Realty Income Corp, they own over 6,500 properties diversified with 630 different tenants operating in 51 industries throughout 49 states, Puerto Rico, and the UK. The majority of their properties are not attached to large shopping structures like malls or part of multi-use properties, but are standalone buildings in high traffic areas like the ones you can see on screen now. Most of their commercial tenants operate retail stores providing non-discretionary goods and services at low price points. Some examples of their tenants that provide these essential products are Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx, Walmart, Kroger, and Home Depot. Most of the leases are triple net leases, which means that in addition to monthly rent payments, the tenant also is responsible for operating expenses of the property, which includes taxes, maintenance, and insurance expenses. What this means for the company is it's in a reduction to exposure to the rising operating costs, and it makes their cash flow more predictable and consistent month over month. Now that we've talked about their general business model, Let's take a deep dive into the top 20 tenants and analyze their quality and safety. Now the first thing that I notice when I see this top 20 list is how many of the companies are considered investment grade. Investment grade refers to the quality of a company's credit. To be considered an investment grade issue, the company must be rated at BBB- or higher by Standard & Poor's or Moody's, two of the largest credit rating companies in the world. Now what these companies do is analyze how safe it is to loan money to these companies, or in other words, how likely these companies are to make their required payments on their debt. And this is fairly similar to the likelihood that they will pay their rent as well. So if a company has a very high credit rating from Moody's, they should have a very high likelihood of being able to pay their rent, which is good for a company like Realty Income Corp. Now out of Realty Income Corp's top 20 tenants, 12 of them are considered investment grade, and 
all of the top five tenants, Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx, and Dollar Tree, or Family Dollar, are all investment grade companies. And this gives me as an investor a lot of comfort investing in this company because they all have very high quality tenants. Also, their portfolio is extremely well diversified between 51 different industries. On screen now, you can see their top six industries in terms of revenue concentration, which includes convenience stores like 7-Eleven, drug stores like Walgreens, dollar stores like Dollar General, grocery stores like Walmart or Kroger, health and fitness like LA Fitness, and theaters like AMC. I would say that all these industries are fairly safe except for theaters, but that only accounts for 6% of their revenue and the rest of theirs all seem pretty safe. The investment grade of their tenants and industry diversification is all great in theory, but how has this contributed to their past success? Well, one of the major challenges that real estate companies face is keeping their units full, which is measured by occupancy rate. An occupancy rate of 100% means that at that point in time, there is not a single square foot of property that they own that is unrented. And this is essentially impossible for these companies to achieve. But their goal is to stay as close to this number as possible, which Realty Income Corp has done a great job in doing since it became a public company in the 1990s. They regularly maintain occupancy rates above 98% and have never dropped below 96% even during the last recession. Now in my opinion, this is why they're such a strong investment, because even during downturns, they're able to remain profitable by maintaining their strong current tenant base. Now this doesn't necessarily mean it'll happen again during this downturn, but it is a good indication, and I'm very confident that they will continue to perform well even if things get ugly. And this brings me to their dividend. After all, they do call themselves the monthly dividend company. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, they are a dividend aristocrat. But what does it actually look like? On the screen now, you can see their dividend growth history since they became a public company in 1995. It shows a consistent upward trend, and you can see during and after the real estate crash that took place in 2009, they continued to pay out and increase their dividend every single year. This was possible because of their high tenant quality, industry diversification, and higher than average occupancy rate. Now going into 2020, they're in a much better position than they even were in 2009. They have better tenants, with a higher proportion of them being investment grade, they carry less debt as a percentage of their total assets, and they have more properties, over 2.5 times more than they did in 2009. So I'm confident that because they made it through 2009 seemingly unscathed, they will make it through this current crisis as well. So as a REIT, you are legally required to pay out 90% of your taxable income in the form of dividends to avoid taxation or penalties. However, historically, you can see that the dividend payout ratio for realty is not that high. This is because of different accounting treatments between gap net income and the net income utilized to calculate that 90% threshold. So because the company doesn't necessarily pay out every single bit that they make in the form of dividends, they have some cash on hand and some retained earnings or equity within the company to continue operating even if they take a hit. So, in conclusion, I would say that, in my opinion, Realty Income Corp is one of the safest investments in the market right now. They have very high quality tenants, above market occupancy, and are well diversified in terms of industry exposure. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would honestly give them a 9.75 possibly a perfect 10, which is not something that I take lightly. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you enjoyed it and want to see more, like the video, subscribe, and turn notifications on. Also in a second you'll see two of my videos pop up on the screen, so watch one of those, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.